I know from our emails, there's quite a few folks who are sneaking in a last minute summer vacation. And this weekend looks like a good time to do that. So we look forward to seeing some folks back too next week. <clears throat> but let's pray the prayer of illumination together, shall we? Jesus, you are the word and wisdom of God. Show up today in the preaching and receiving of the word. Change our words and worlds. In your name we pray, amen. Our first scripture reading comes from excerpts from the book of Proverbs. Hear these words. The mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. Rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. And our sermon text today comes from James chapter 3. Are any of you wise and understanding? Show that your actions are good with a humble lifestyle that comes from wisdom. However, if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, then stop bragging and living in ways that deny the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above. Instead, it is from the earth, natural and demonic. Wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there is disorder in everything that is evil. What of the wisdom from above? First, it is pure, and then peaceful, gentle, obedient, filled with mercy and good actions, fair and genuine. Those who make peace sow the seeds of justice by their peaceful acts. For what is the source of conflict among you? What is the source of your disputes? Don't they come from your cravings that are at war in your own lives? You long for something you don't have, so you commit murder. You are jealous for something you can't get, so you struggle and fight. You don't have because you don't ask. You ask and you don't have because you ask with evil intentions to waste it on your own cravings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was growing up, I went to a small Christian school. And if the preacher for chapel, we had chapel twice a week, and if the preacher for chapel was preaching from the book of James, we usually knew that that meant the teachers or other school officials felt that there was too much gossip going around or someone had said something pretty terrible. That's not why I chose today's text. I saw something in today's lectionary text that I found quite interesting. I wonder if you will too. But if you're unfamiliar with the book of James, it's a fantastic little book. It's punchy, is how I would say it is. James starts his letter by describing faith and a faith that perseveres. Then he discusses how faith without works is a dead faith. If we aren't taking care of one another, clothing the naked, feeding the poor, doing acts of justice, we have no faith, according to James. And in this section of his letter, James discusses the power of the tongue the power of the words we use. He gives different metaphors. He gives the metaphor of a horse with a bridle being led around. He said we need to be like a ship with a rudder with our words. He says our tongue is, is like a fire and how easily it can set a forest ablaze. James focuses on the power of our tongue because he knows the power of words. Words have the power to create and to destroy. 
Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel said, words create worlds. That's what we see in scripture from a God who creates by just speaking it into existence to a God who gives us the word, both in book form and as himself. Words create worlds. So it may seem that the things that need fixing, according to James, the the trouble that we need to attend to are the words we use. James wants us to be kind, say things in a gentle way, and in love. Easy, job done. But that's the interesting thing about today's text that I thought would be good to highlight. If you look carefully, you'll see that James doesn't want the listeners to merely change the words we use. No, James is after the words we create and use to create our inner worlds, which he says is the cause of so much conflict in our outer world. James says, what is the source of conflict among you? What is the source of your disputes? Don't they come from your cravings that are at war in your own lives? You long for something you don't have, so you commit murder, implying with your words. You are jealous for something that you can't have, and so you struggle and fight. Maybe there's bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart. How's your inner world doing? Your inner monologue, how you talk to yourself, how you think about yourself and others in the world. Is it good? Or might it be like a forest ablaze, as James says? It reminds me when I was in college, I was in a group of students looking to go into ministry, and we studied something called the Heidelberg Catechism, which we'll get to later in our service. And a catechism is question and answers usually for children to learn the faith. And it goes over the Ten Commandments. And for the Sixth Commandment, thou shalt not murder, it says this, does this commandment only refer to murdering? And the answer is, by forbidding murder, God teaches us that God hates the root of murder. Envy, hatred, anger, and vindictiveness. In God's sight, all such are disguised forms of murder. And the chaplain that was with us asked, I wonder how many little murders we commit every day just with our thoughts of, our, of others and even of ourselves. How many little murders go on in our internal world? Are we unforgiving to others because in our internal world we're unforgiving to ourselves? Do we manipulate and control others because we feel powerless in our own lives? Do we feel resentment at others succeeding because we have envy? Do we bitterly despise family members or coworkers or those we come alongside of because we have an ever-growing narrative of we do it all? all while we never bring things up with them or request that they do their part. We lash out in anger or we avoid conflict altogether because we don't want to endure conflict more. All these little murders, these life-sucking realities going on within us, especially when they go unintended lead to conflict in our outer world, James says, over and over again. Have you ever felt a certain conflict keep arising in your life, in your relationships? It might be an unattended thing in your inner world. 
psychologist Carl Jung says, until we make the unconscious conscious, it will direct our lives and we will call it fate. Is there a fate that seems to keep happening in your relationships? This internal world is the trouble that James is trying to get us to attend to. And we attend to it, and when we do, our words and worlds change. That would feel so different. Imagine what it would feel like if our internal worlds were filled with the words that James describes as wisdom, words of purity and peace, gentleness, filled with mercy and good actions, fair, genuine, leading to acts of mercy and justice. Wisdom and its words would feel like healing. As the proverb said, Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. The question is, how are you doing with your internal world? And how do we get there? There's a wonderful metaphor that I think applies today, and that is bison. Bison, what weird and interesting creatures are bison? Bison, scientists have found out, have an interesting thing they do as a herd, is that when they sense a storm coming, they turn towards it. In fact, when they hear thunder, they run towards it. Bison know that it's better to face the oncoming reality than trying to run from it. When there's outward conflict in our lives and in our world and you feel that internal agitation, that unease within you, it may be time to be brave like bison and turn towards the storm. Like bison and like how James is trying to point us to, what is the source of the conflict among you? the source of your disputes? Don't they come from the war in your own lives? There are many great stories of individuals who bravely turn towards the storm within. Really, most stories of pilgrimage are also stories of internal journeys of facing a certain storm. In the New Testament, you see the prodigal son who finally faces the storm within and then runs back to his father. St. Augustine looks for all the wrong love in all the wrong places and eventually comes around to converting to Christianity. Or even fictional stories like Bilbo Baggins in The Lord of the Rings or maybe if you're a moviegoer, Elizabeth Gilbert in Eat, Pray, Love. I thought I would leave you, though, with a playbook of sorts so that you can turn towards the source of conflict within you with a plan in hand. Author and speaker Brene Brown, in her book Rising Strong, gives some great advice. One way to summarize her book is with three R's, words that start with R that she gives. And those are recognizing, rumbling, and revolutionizing. In Rising Strong, she says, we have to turn to our inner worlds, our inner conflict, and we have to recognize our eternal emotions. And then we have to rumble with them and wrestle and wonder, what is the story that I'm telling myself? What are the words in my internal world that are making me feel this way? And then we have to revolutionize our actions after we have recognized and rumbled. Throughout the book, she details 
uh, different ways that she has done this in her own life. At one point, she thought her and her husband would split up. She was thinking her husband was drifting away from their relationship. She felt sad and ashamed because she kept thinking it was something about her, that she wasn't good enough in some way. She noticed this about herself. She recognized it and rumbled with this story, and she chose to revolutionize her actions by bringing it up, bringing it up to her husband in vulnerability. And it turns out that he was going through something totally different in his internal world. And that's why he had drifted. But her doing this changed the story of them. Another time, she remembers being extremely angry at an email she received at work. She realized that she did have room, actually, to improve. But her profound sense of feeling incompetent was based in a story that she needed to perform at a certain level in order to belong. After she rumbled with that, she responded with nuance and integrity, saying, I could improve. But by doing so, that is the exact opposite of being incompetent. One time, her daughter failed to qualify at a swim meet, and her daughter was just crying in the corner, and she was, Brene was frantic to try to figure out what to do to fix the situation thinking maybe we could, we could run the swim again. But after she recognized her, mo her unease and her anxiety and the story she was telling her that being a mom means to fix everything, once she recognized that and rumbled with that, she realized what she had to do was be present and encourage her daughter. I wonder what the three R's would do to your internal life. I wonder what the practicing the three R's would do to the communities we find ourselves in and the relationships we have, our church community, our neighborhoods, our families, our coworkers. Don't be deceived. The three R's don't get you away from pain. In fact, just like the bison, they turn you towards it. But you'll be working through it. That is the glory of turning towards it. And the good news is that you won't do it alone. Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, unites with us and turns towards the storm with us. There is a peace that only Jesus can give when you turn towards the storm with him. The other bit of good news is we're also given a herd, our church family, our faith groups, our friends, whether it's through Bible study or discussions at different programs we volunteer at or when we get together outside of Sunday morning. We don't have to face our storms alone. Bison don't do it. We shouldn't either. If you're not plugged in somewhere, it'd be a good idea to get plugged in. Friends of Jesus, let the words of James be words of encouragement and of challenge. James can challenge us to bravely turn towards the storm within Recognize how you feel. Rumble with the stories you tell yourself and are at war within you. Revolutionize the way you live. You'll know the way of wisdom because it will feel like peace and gentleness will feel fair and genuine. Wisdom will lead you to acts of mercy that plant the seeds of justice. And in so doing, we will transform our hearts and our worlds. May it be so. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus.
Grant us the bravery to turn towards our inner conflicts and seek your wisdom so that our words might bring new life to ourselves and others. In the name of the one who is your word and wisdom, we pray. Amen.